Amelia Cornelia Jones. Um, I'm not going to stop bragging on her. Um, she, uh, she, I first was introduced to her um, because she is the first recipient of our um, PAL Mother of Color Child Care Grants um, for her work with Blackboard Plays, um, who you should also look up. Incredible. Here in New York City, um, those are some of the new playwrights that we all need to get behind supporting. Um, and she has also recently come on board as the New York City PAL Chief Rep for the whole city. <laughs> so we're so excited to like, yeah, just hear where her heart goes is going to be a wonderful um, opportunity for us to see what the vision can be for this city. Um, so thank you all so much. Uh, I know that uh, right now my <laughs> wonderful event producers are like here because they can talk about these women all the time. Um, but it is my absolute pleasure if my friends can go and join their seats and join their little mini pod communities, which you'll see what those are for in a little bit. Ha <laughs> ha plot twist. Um, and now I would like to introduce uh, someone who I, I have also grown to admire. Um, this is someone who has made such a wonderful impact in the conversation of gender parity when it comes to composition and music direction. Um, and that's, I would like to start introducing, you can come up whenever you're ready, but um, Georgia Stitt is with us tonight. <laughs> It is such a pleasure to have her. She is a composer, lyricist, music director, and pianist. She has written several musicals, including Snow Child and Big Red Sun and Samantha Spade, Ace Detective, and has produced several albums of her songs. She is the founder and president of Maestra Music, an organization that was created to provide support, visibility, and community to the women who make the music in the musical theater industry. <laughs> Incredible. More musicals by women, please. Um, and I, I have invited her to speak for, um, for two minutes just on Maestra and the importance of that um, before we move into the next piece. So, Georgia, thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. Is this on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is this thing on? Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rachel, for having me. Um, I, um, I have worked for a long time in this industry in New York City as a music director, a pianist, a composer, an arranger, orchestrator, all of the things under the umbrella of Jack of all trades, Jill of all trades, <laughs> musical theater person. And, um, and many, 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 many times over the years, I've been the only woman on the team. Um, at, at, uh, in parallel, I also had a girlfriend who was doing the same thing, my friend Mary Mitchell Campbell, who's the music supervisor of Mean Girls and The Prom and, and basically everything. She's <laughs> like one of the, the most working women in the music industry in, the, in Broadway. And she and I are roughly the same age, and we sort of came up the industry together, and we said to each other, I can't do this job, but I'm going to recommend you whenever I can't do it. So if they can't get me, they can get you. And, and so we just watched for two decades now, we've watched our careers grow like this. And I thought, who would I be and what would I be if I didn't have a girlfriend having my back? And, and similarly. Um, and our paths diverged. I became more of a composer. She became more of a conductor. But we still meet for lunch once a month or breakfast usually because that's the 9 a.m. time is when we have available. Um, and, um, and so I thought the thing that's missing when you're the only woman on the music team is that sense of girlfriend, that sense of partnership and the, the, girl, the woman who has your back. Um, and so I thought, wh what is this community? Who are the women who are doing this? And I realized that I didn't really know who they are. Um, I had a few pivotal moments. I, I performed a concert of my own music, uh, and I had a female composer come up to me at the end of it and, and say that she was overwhelmed watching that because she'd realized she'd never seen a, a woman at the center of the conducting, playing the piano, my piece being performed. She had never seen that, and she thought, how can I do this for a career if I can't even imagine it? I can't even see what it would look like. And so watching you do it, I thought it's the first time I've seen that. And then I had another young woman, a female composer, reach out to me and say she was starting grad school uh, to write musical theater. And she got the syllabus and realized there were only men on the curriculum, only male composers. And so she went to the professor and said, why are there no women on the syllabus? And he said, who do you think should be on the syllabus? And she said, I don't know. That's why I'm in grad school. <laughs> and he said, you should call Georgia Stitt. And I think he said that because he didn't know either. He didn't know the answer. Um, so I got those two women together, and we, they met each other, and b were both like, oh, thank God, someone else who does this. Um, and I thought, okay, this is what's missing, is this sense of community. So I started a, um, basically a cocktail party, uh, a party, and uh, gathered, invited the women that I knew who were composers and, and prominent music directors 
uh, and we met a few times, and then I started bringing in guest speakers to speak to us about things musical. We brought in orchestrators, and we brought in um, arrangers and producers, and uh, you know, every conductors. Um, and I kept scouring, like, who's winning the awards? Who's graduating from the programs? Who's getting a show produced? Who, who do I not know? And then those women started inviting other women. And the group has grown. We have about 140 women on the, on the mailing list now. And we meet every month, and there are usually about 40 women that come every month. It's a rotating group, depending on who's available. Um, and an offshoot of that is that we now, um, we have, a, we built a directory. So if you're trying to hire more women on your creative team, you can go to maestromusic.org. And you can uh, say, like, I'm looking for an arranger in the city of Washington, D.C., who's a member of the union, who works in finale, who also plays the piano. And the, the, all the search filters will give you names of people who qualify in those categories. So I just don't ever want to hear, well, we wanted to hire a woman, but we couldn't find her. We are trying to solve that problem. Um, and then from our community, we have a group called Maestro Moms that we started. And um, you're going to be lucky enough to hear from Tina DeVaron in a few minutes. But Tina is the head of that with her partner, Lauren Kreger. The two of them co-chair that program. And we have been trying to build community among the women musicians who often are trying to figure out how do I have time to make music? How do I have time literally to put my brain on this thing, but also to go to the other place where I have to work to make music? How, how is that even possible? And so we're trying to build a community there too. So anyway, that's me, Maestro Music, and um, we're officially a not-for-profit, and um, we have a number of big initiatives coming up in the next year. So thanks for paying attention and for supporting Moms for All Causes. And I'm also a mom. How did I leave that out? I have two daughters. They're 10 and 14. Anyway, thanks for having me today. Thank you. Um, so definitely look up Maestra, and if you know women who want to get involved in musical theater, send them George's way, because there's a wonderful community that's building to support them. Um, and then that's a perfect transition into the first part of our performance programming. Um, I'd like to welcome to the stage Tina DeVeron and Jennifer Blood. Um, as Georgia mentioned, Tina is one of the co-founders of Maestra Moms, um, and uh, she was one of the first people who reached out to me in, uh, about Maestra and um, I learned that she has written numerous songs on the topic of motherhood and that I, I had heard because of the nature of our business. And so once we connected, I was like, well, this is definitely going to come into play at some point. And she's joined by Jennifer Blood, who um, is also a mom and a killer singer. And so it is my pleasure that they get to bring their art to us tonight. So please enjoy. Please give it up for Tina and Jennifer. for you to see what your life can truly be shining star for you to see what your life can truly be <laughs> Hopefully I will do that <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank the costumes, you dye the eggs, you hang the decorations, you bake the cake, and in between, you work the pay. When you get tired of standing up, sister, sit down and say, mom is not my real name. Mom is not my real name. There's somebody else. I used to be with the name my mama gave to me. Now I, I won't walk away. If there's trouble at school or if you have a bad day, but I want you to know I have a life. 
It's got room for everything. It's got room for everything. And by the way, mom is not my real name. Mom is not my real name. There's somebody else I used to be with the name my mama gave to me. Now, the other day, I'm walking down Fifth Avenue, and a young woman pushing a stroller comes into view. And she's thin, and she's blonde, and she's beautiful. She looks so rested. <laughs> and I wonder, as she passes me pushing that stroller, when her babies get just a little bit older, and she's stirring the oatmeal, and she's doing the dishes, and she's wiping noses, and washing out lunch boxes, and cleaning out backpacks, and she's answering voicemails, and she's answering emails, and she's answering texts, and she's answering messenger, and she's, she's answering children, mom, what? <laughs> and she's answering children, mom, what? And she's answering children, mom, what? Will she find herself saying, Mom is not my real name. Mom is not my real name. There's somebody else I used to be with the name my mama gave to me, the name my mama gave to me. Okay, now we want you to sing with us. Mom is not my real name. Sing it. Mom is not my real name. 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 Not my real name. Mom is not my real name. There's somebody else I used to be with a name my mama gave to me. <sighs> Jennifer blood. Thank you so much. You all sounded incredible as well, if I may be so bold. Um, this is this is wonderful. I mean, just the the energy the putting in put into this art um, that was put into the messaging that connected with all of you. I mean, you don't even need to be a mom. I know some people who are not even parents and were laughing at this because I think that there's so much connection and opportunity um, for for that incredible piece. If you want to find her, she's on SoundCloud. Tina DeVaren, Mom is Not My Real Name, and it's from the Motherhood Song Book. Um, so there are many tracks that you can find, and also Jennifer Blood is a professional, as you could tell from her sound, so find her and go see her anywhere you can. I'm going to invite Mary uh, Hodges to the stage right now. <laughs> if you could come up, Mary Hodges. <laughs> the talent does not quit tonight. You may, you may. <laughs> Honestly, I needed that song, and I'm like jazzed. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, uh, I was able to um, connect with Mary through POW, actually. Um, but it was when she was in the middle of, this is like part of the loose introduction, let me just my exposure to Mary. She was in the middle of tech for a, a little piece um, that's doing uh, kind of well called Slave Play. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> Mary is the assistant director on this incredible piece of work. You can clap again. <laughs> this isn't school. This is a happy hour, and I am very happy to say that 
I, I connected with her, and um, she started to tell me her story. Um, and the story is that this is a woman whose resume includes TV, film, theater. She's incredibly gifted. When she spoke to me about the passion of what she was working on and what she wanted to engage with, um, and, and her trajectory that was about her as a single mother taking every opportunity possible to continue her work, it, I, I was moved. In, in a way that like I continue, I'm continually moved by learning these stories, but I was also inspired because of what, <laughs> the gather around, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty, no, no, it's fine, this is for you, this is all for you, um, where she, she was able to, uh, in just one phone call, capture I, I was able to capture her passion for this entire industry and what she wanted to do. And what was so special about that was she was saying, look, this is where I am. This is the opportunity. I know that I'm ready to give it. But this institution isn't ready to support me the way that I need. And that's the truth. That is, you can clap for that, too. <laughs> so um, I, I'm very proud to say that it was – from that conversation that um, we were able to identify Mary as our one of our institutional match grant recipients from PAL for a child care grant. But here's why. is because we knew that she was giving so much to the field. She was giving so much to the institution that we wanted the institution to learn how to support her in return. And I think that they got a pretty good end of the deal and this brilliant artist who has so much promise. Um, and so I, I want to start off actually with a question that's not on the sheet, but you seem to be pretty cool with that. Um, when I Google you, um, <laughs> I Google all of you. Um, <laughs> uh, when, I, when I looked you up, it, there was a two-line bio that was on Broadway World. I loved it. Um, it said, Assistant Director of Slave Play. And then the second line was, and proud single mother to... Oh, man. Her son. Her two-line bio included two incredible accomplishments. So I wanted to ask you, what is, what is your heart behind that bio? Those two lines say so much. Um, the proud single. Yeah. In juxtaposition with the arts, right? right? Um, I don't know. I think... Um, it was just ironic how my first credit <laughs> on Broadway was is triple fold in many ways that it was as an assistant director and first not as an actor. And then, you know, the title of the show. Um, and then at this point in my life. So I, I wanted to make a bold statement um, by saying this is part of my identity um, and, and let the chips fall away where they may. Because some people would say, you don't need to put that there, right? Just say, go off of, you know, this is this is a director or what have you. But it's just big part of, um, of who I am. And I choose, like, I chose not to hide that. So if that answers your question. Absolutely. I think it does for me. I think for many of us, we still feel that it does have to be um, a choice. Like, am I going to lead with this? Or am I going to let it slip into the conversation naturally? Or am I going to choose maybe to not mention it right. at all? And, there are, ma and, and I, there are many, 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 many times where I don't mention him on my bios in the playbill, you know, because it's just like, okay, it's just professional, professional. Or what is professional, right? To not say that. Right. The so right. Yeah. So, but for this particular occasion, for my first time, I was like, I'm going to just put that footprint right there. I think it's beautiful. I think it made quite the impression. It did on me to read that on Broadway World. Um, I, I want to I start at the beginning. So what is one of your earliest memorable experiences as a parent in oh. the theater? 
<laughs> I think she's so prepared. This is part two. Yeah. So I have to have my own. <laughs> um, so what was the question again, Rachel? The One of your earliest that. memorable experience as a parent in the theater, when those two, two circumstances were uh, juxtaposed. Um, as a parent in the theater. Um, I have to say, like, one of them, um, I was actually, I went into labor, and I didn't know I was into labor. It was like one of those checks where you have to start checking in every week with the gynecologist. And I forgot what week I was, maybe 36 or what have you. And I, I go in, and she said, oh, you're in labor. <laughs> you, need to <laughs> you need to go right to the uh, check-in at the children's hospital. This is a uh, Washington Heights Presbyterian. And I was like, what? She said, you need to go check in. You know, you're in labor. You, you don't feel anything? I was like, no, I don't feel anything. My water didn't break. I didn't have like, you know. She's like, well, you're in labor and you need to go. And it felt like, you know, monopoly. Do not go past go. You have to keep going. I was like, you mean I can't go home and get my bag? No, you need to go and check in. I really wanted to cry. I'm proud of myself. I didn't, but I was like this close. Um, and so, because I was also, um, there was a show going on. I was, um, uh, I directed a show for the Downtown Urban Theater Festival, and it was going to go up, I'm gonna say the next night. And so, I wanted to cry, and I'm like walking um, with my son's father, we're in the corner. We literally had to walk around the corner. I was like, do you think she really meant, like, not go home? She's like, no. <laughs> so, so we go, and he checked in and got me situated, and then he left to go get the bag. And I just felt really alone at that point. But then I got on the phone, and I had to contact the playwright. I was like, Ceci? I'm checking in, I'm going into labor, I won't be there at the show. Because it's one of those things where it's like, you said all the sound cues, everything was on my computer, and I was going to do it. So then what happened was, make a long story short, memorable, was I, they got me set up, got me a room, and then the playwright, and then her friend showed up, and I was there, somebody took a picture, there's a picture out there in the world of me in, hooked up to tubes and everything, and I'm going through the sound cues and transferring stuff. I literally gave her my MacBook that I had at the time. So she could go run cues for the show the next night. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's one. You gave your MacBook show baby yes. in their care. But I had to explain it. So it wasn't like just here. No, right, yeah. You know, you had to go through the script because, you know, I knew it. And this is where the sound cues and things, yeah. So. I would say that's pretty yeah. memorable. I know I'm not going to forget it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, I mean, but also like what you did for that show, how wonderful that you're yeah. like, both of these things are existing as an event in my life. Yeah. Right and we now. got second runner up for that. She hey. Second runner up for that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You I explained the, the cues really <laughs> well. <laughs> um, that's, that's great. And, and so to move into this, like kicking off your, your motherhood life that way, what, what about being a mother and an artist, have you found has brought you the most joy? Joy. Yeah. I did ask for this question. Yeah. Right? Ah, uh, joy. That's loaded. Um, you can change the question. Yeah. There are I, no rules. You know, let me see. What did I write down? Oh, hmm. Mm. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, you know, it's, it's unique. Um, I think being uh, an artist and being a parent, and I'm, I, I want to say because there are men in here, so I don't want to just say moms, you know, there, as being a parent. Um, I think you, um, even though we complain and we whine about like, you know, how tired we are, I think there's something um, a little, uh, jazzy, a little something that's um, extra um, that we bring into the space and a sensitivity. Uh, and speaking of which, um, I was um, working on a, a show, um, New Perspectives um, Theater Company, way over on the west side, actually not too far from here. 
and um, we were in rehearsals. And I, that's why I want to make clear that we just don't make sure careful about just saying moms because it was a parent. And he had talked about, um, we were planning the rehearsal schedule and he had mentioned, you know, he's the caretaker for his child and the rehearsal schedule. I was like, well, I took him aside. I was like, you need to bring him, bring him because I've brought my son to rehearsals um, or let me know. We can stagger your call, whatever you need so we can get you here. Um, so I think there's a different awareness that we come in, whatever our hat is. Um, and at that time I was wearing my director hat. And then, um, so I think that brings in the look on his face by having a director acknowledge that he's a parent and this was his concern and that he was heard. So he didn't have to feel like he needed to hide that. So I think um, there's a sensitivity and an awareness when we're in spaces. It, it also, you know, le the word legacy was talked about a lot today in your conversation with Emily. And what I love um, that, that sounds like it's uh, an effect of this sensitivity and this awareness that you have is now you're creating an, a new standard for him. Yes. Of what that empathy and care should be for him in the room. Yes. And then also, you know, the part of also what we talked about earlier is um, there's another set of the word in, this, in the question is joy, right? I make fun. But then there's a joy of also of having relief knowing that your child can be welcomed in the space or um, the, the joy that your child brings to other people, artists, in the space that they weren't expecting to get. <laughs> um, so, you know, it can, it can be spread, you know, in many different ways. And then there's also like um, um, just conversations because, you know, my son, you know, uh, the director of a show I was just in when I s switched and I wore my actor hat not too long ago, the Hope Hypothesis is a good example because Omri would come often to rehearsal and, you know, he loved the show. You know, and there were some inappropriate words in there, but he's a theater baby. So you just say, you just say, you can't say those words at school, <laughs> right? That's what I say. Yeah. Fair enough. And and he he'll come into, a sh uh, you know, rehearsals, and he's the first to memorize. He'll memorize the play and the script. And then sometimes there was um one show where we'll have a conversation about the show. And he's often, you know, the first, you know, critic and he'll speak his mind of what he <laughs> thinks about it. And he'll say, you know, you were really good, Mom. And I'm like, thank you. Because he would tell me if I wasn't. <laughs> and be honest about it. And he'll talk about, you know, other bits. So that's another sense of joy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, yes. I love that you mentioned that because um, so often when we, we do try to identify the obstacles of motherhood or parenthood, it comes in that feeling of being divided, that your art exists here and your motherhood exists here, but they all exist in one person. Yeah. And so how do you amputate that part of yourself to enter a new space? And it sounds like the joy for you is when you can enter as a whole person Yes. into the room. Yes, which also goes back to not hiding it. Yes. And keep trying to keep those <laughs> things <laughs> separate. I hear some ums in the audience, too. Thank you. <laughs> um, I bet I hear some ums through the live streaming as well. Um, so um, what support, um, I mean, you talked about, uh, you know, children entering the space and things like that. I, the question I had was, you know, what support have you received? You kind of already answered that. I would love to know, you know, where can we go from here, though? This all sounds like wonderful and simple, but I'm not the type of personality to ever settle. So I don't want to stay here. What happens when we ask the question, that's wonderful, where should we go? Like, if you could vision cast for what you would love support to look like for yourself as you grow as a mother and as an artist, how can the support for parents grow as well? Um. Well, I see a world. Yeah. And this is where we would have the piano go, right? Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I see a world. Um, 
where we talked about uh, the word surprise, yeah. you know, being thrown out. Or there's, this is part two to our day for some who weren't able to make it earlier. The conversation that we were having with Emily Mann about um, not being surprised about the struggle, the ongoing struggle of the parent and not getting support, whether it's monetary or um, uh, friends or colleagues um, with our children. Um, where it's, it's just a norm where if we're offered a job and they'll say, um, do you need any, do you have any concerns or do you need assistance with anything that we can arrange for you, right? Yeah. Because we're still in a place where you're not, you know, saying up front as far as discrimination, whether you have children or you have spouse or you have this or you have that, right? or you're a caretaker of somebody in your family. So then I would, you know, I would say, as a matter of fact, there is. Um, I'm going to need some um, assistance with my son. You know, he gets out of school at this such and such a time, and I'm going to have somebody, you know, pick him up or what have you. Is there room for you to, um, can we have, is there a space that where he can be, where he can sit and do his homework or what have you? And then that person would say, of course, misogynist. Yeah. We can provide a space <laughs> for your yeah. son to come in. You can clap for that, too. <laughs> you can stand up and dance for that. I, know, of course. Yes, of course. Versus, you know, getting into, you know, X, Y, Z, and all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's the surprise, because, you know, there's limited resources. It's like, oh, I don't know if we can do it. But what we're talking about is when you ask for something like that, like support, and they're like, I, oh, wait, what, what, what's a room? What, I don't know what walls are. And you're like, oh, my gosh. People oh, you're going to have to sign a waiver. Yeah. People have been having children since the dawn of time. Like, if we haven't figured this out, literally, that's how we came to be. If we haven't figured it out by now, it's because we haven't thought it through. Right? So right. I love this idea where you're like, it's going, I, yes, I'm just going to jump on that to say I would love that to be the vision, too that it's more of a surprise when they don't know how to support you than it is a surprise when they do. Yes. Right? Yeah. You can clap for that too. Yeah, and I'll take it a step further. Please. Um, as far as like regional world, right? Because, you know, there's theater beyond New York City. And that's where some of us, you know, make our living if you're able to go out of state, which is a challenge for me right now. So what I foresee is, you know, we get a job offer to go to pick a state, anyone? Minnesota. Minnesota all right. So, and they say, um, you know what? Uh, and I'll say, you know, I want, I need to bring my son with me. Um, can you provide me? He's in this grade. Um, do you have a, a short list of schools? And they can go. Um, I'm going to put you in touch with the company manager. They have a short list of schools because we have a relationship with these schools in our community. Mm. And so here are the schools that parents who have come to work with us have enrolled their kids in. Thank now you. that is stepping up yes. versus, oh, you go and do the research. And also, it puts the obligation on the institution to have a relationship with the community. Which they should. Which Hello. You, the, these words that you've said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's my last question. But, like, uh, let's put that out there again. So they have the resources for you. Yes. Because they already. work. Because they have a relationship with the community. Yes, they have a relationship with the community, but they also recognize that they're bringing in artists from all over the country, and artists are parents too. They're Ooh. not just like. Mary Hodges, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I am. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, we're moving into the next section of our programming, but there is time to mingle a bit after. Grab her, talk to her, talk to her about her, talk to her about her work. Um, she's on fire. Um, I, I We're going to move into the next portion of our programming, but this is not the last you're going to hear from Mary, if I have anything to do with it. So um, I just want to send everyone to the PAL website, who's at home, P-A-A-L theater with an R-E dot com. Um, our hope is that these events become more regular so that you can all find community. Yes. You can find Mary, who is awesome. Um, 
I was supposed to do this at the beginning. It's my mea culpa, but I'm not going to miss the opportunity to do it because I also find it uh, an imperative to do. So if you will join me in a bit of a deconstructed programming exercise, avant-garde, where we say, pretend it is the beginning, before we begin today's summit, we would like to acknowledge that we are gathered on the lands of the Lenape people in their ancestral lands. Menahada. We are the guests of the land, and we want to take a moment to acknowledge and honor the indigenous stewards of this place, past, present, and future. Um, following this acknowledgement, um, and with gratitude to the history of activism and preservation undertaken and led by native and indigenous communities, we'd like to acknowledge today's climate strike. You could be engaging with that vital movement today, but you're here with us. However, climate action and parent inclusion are intrinsically linked. We cannot create a better world for families without actively seeking to preserve that world. We urge you to take a moment to reflect on your relationship to the land today and offer gratitude to those who are leading the movement for climate justice. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, thank you all to, uh, thank you to the Lenape people on their ancestral land, Menahara. Um, you can clap for that too. Um, it is, it is my absolute pleasure to um, introduce to you um, the, the next individual who is going to be taking us into a really exciting, now you know the purpose of your pods. It's great. Um, I would like to introduce Karina Schulenberg, Director of Communications at TCG. Um, she is a playwright and creative partner at Flux Theater Ensemble here in New York. Without further ado, please help me welcome Karina. Hi everybody, thank you, Rachel. Uh, I wanna start by just saying how meaningful it is for me to be here with you all tonight. Um, as uh, I'm not just your facilitator, I am also a parent. Um, I am a mother and as a queer transgender mother, I sometimes experience my motherhood as excluded, sometimes even contested. So for me, the song would go, mama is my real name, <laughs> right? One of them. Um, and so I don't take it for granted to be in community with you all tonight. The invitation is deeply meaningful to me. Um, I also want to say that it's deeply meaningful to share this practice with you. And it's important for me to start by naming where the practice comes from. So this story circle practice comes from John O'Neill. Uh, is that name familiar to any folks here? Yes. So John O'Neill uh, was the co-founder of the Free Southern Theater, also June Bud Productions. And Free, so Free Southern Theater was, in many ways, the cultural arm of the civil rights movement. Uh, he founded it in the early 60s. And this story circle practice really comes from the struggle for black liberation. And in John's work with Free Southern Theater and as an artist and as an educator, and later with Junebug Productions, which is thriving right now in New Orleans, um, He's been very generous in sharing this practice with others. We're going to use it today, but we're gonna do so understanding uh, the sacred tools that we are using and the reason for which they were created, which was black liberation. Um, so charged with that sacredness, here's how it works. Um, you are going to break into these little pods, although for reasons that will become clear soon, if you can do a little bit of visual tracking and notice if your pod is 